Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Bloom. Welcome back to the channel. We're discussing all things championship on this channel and we do have a story of sorts um, today concerning Nottingham Forest defender Joe Worrell who has had to take to Twitter to apologise for comments saying that if they null and void the season, he would strike 100%. Um, so Worrell appeared on the Nottingham Forest Weekly podcast with BBC host Colin Frey um, to talk about all um, the things that footballers are talking about on podcasts at the moment, 5k runs and um, quizzes and Zoom chats and the normal footballer banter about hair and clothes that we get. But um, Worrell isn't um, the kind of normal, boring, media-trained footballer. That's quite an interesting chap. Seems quite a nice bloke, to be honest. Um, he, at the start of the lockdown, was on Twitter reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar for, qu for Kids, um, held a quiz for Nottingham Forest fans. So he's obviously a kind of um, fairly creative, fairly out there bloke. Some people have just taken to their bunkers and hidden away. Um, he, obviously, not that kind of guy. Um, good player as well. He's played every minute for Forest in the 37 games we've played so far. 23, certainly. Um, maybe one of the more saleable assets in the team, given his age. Um, so, interesting chap. Interesting chat. Um, shall we actually listen to what he says? I have the... Um, podcast up here on my phone and just take into account that um, he's going to use the tongue-in-cheek defence when we when we listen to him speak. So let's have a listen to um, Joe Worrell here on the Nottingham Forest Weekly podcast. Yeah, it's, it's, it's non-negotiable. You can't do a board. If, if uh, they're not on board of the season, then I tell you, I'll be on strike 100%. We can't, we're in the playoffs, for God's sake. We're uh, absolutely Doing, we're doing we're doing so well, and there'll be teams at the bottom of this bottom of the league who, let's say, sixteenth in the league. There we go. So I think we've got the idea. So just a quick passing comment there, saying um, I'd be on strike hundred percent. We're in the playoffs for God's sake. So. Um, and um, I have to say, Mr. Colin Frey doesn't um, go back and challenge him on this. Look, we all understand the nature of, particularly with the BBC and particularly with um, football clubs and reporters that are focused on um, those clubs, that people don't tend to push back. They do want to cultivate um, the relationship with the club and keep you know, say Joe wore alongside, so he comes back on. We know, we know how it works. Um, there could have been a um, could have been a bigger headline if the reporter uh, Colin Frey had gone back and said, "You go on strike," and actually pushed him on it. And in which instance, I'm sure Joe Worrell would have um, taken a step back and maybe distanced himself from that comment. So, um, what uh, Worrell then does is, um, well, he goes to Twitter on the basis that. The BBC Sport Twitter, so this is not the Nottingham, um, Nottinghamshire BBC Twitter, but the BBC Sport Twitter, um, in rather horribly <laughs> clickbaity fashion, um, throws Worrell under the bus, really. Um, they tweet an article summing up the 21-minute podcast, um, and the tweet says, if null and void this... Um, I, if they null and void the season, I'd strike 100%. Nottingham Forest defender Joe Worrell says he'll strike if the championship is cancelled. So, um, yeah, uh, look, I'm on YouTube. OK, we try and draw attention to our product. I don't know what headline I'll go with for this video. But, yeah, that does seem a little bit sensational, especially when you click through to the article, um, which has got a much more mild headline... Um, Joe Worrell, Nottingham Forest defender, says it would be unfair if the season cancelled. Well, I think we all agree with that. And then I've scanned the article a couple of times. The um, quote is not, <laughs> not even in the article, I guess. So um, some sense that um, left arm of BBC, not talking to right arm of BBC. We know they're um, a big organisation, but... I think uh, someone running the BBC Sport Twitter or with access to the BBC Sport Twitter there has got a little bit excited and tried to get some clicks and some...
headlines. Um, so here's what uh, Worrell said on Twitter. Regarding this interview I did with Colin Frey, the headline and focus of what I said has been taken out of context. I think that's a fair comment. Um, the sentence tagged on the headline of me going on strike was said tongue-in-cheek as I tried to explain how angry I'd be if the season got cancelled. Um, not so sure it was tongue-in-cheek. Um, I mean, Joe Worrell will, will know. I agree it's been taken out of context, um, but that does feel a little bit like um, when I have an argument with my missus or say something. Oh, I was only joking. I was only joking. There we go. Um, he continues, I'm not an idiot. I can't strike if there is no football going on anyway. It was simply said as an expression of my frustration. So, yes, I, yeah, I totally agree with that, that um, it's been taken out of context. And yes, it is an expression of frustration. I just wanted to make it clear to Forest fans and football fans in general, as the reception to this interview has been overwhelmingly bad. Oh, Twitter, football, dear me, don't listen to him, Joe. Um, I apologise um, for any offence caused by the headline. <laughs> That's nicely put, not by his comments, but by the headline, which... Um, Fair enough, I'd say. And I understand there are greater things going on in the world right now. I'm fully aware of that. Football is not important. Lives are being lost. Everything else can take a backseat for the moment. Thank you, Joe. So, um, interesting little kind of back and forth, etc. Um, there's sort of three points that I wanted to talk about. One is um, footballers on Twitter, really. And... Um, from from what I know, I quite, I quite like Joe Worrell. Um, he's like I said, he seems fun. He seems out there. Um, I'm not saying that the um, Paul Scholes approach to life and football of you know go to your room, never do any interviews, folks. That's fine. You know, if people want to do that, obviously um, someone like Joe Worrell is a different type of personality, um, which is great. I think, especially for. Um, us football fans following for people who want to make content like the BBC, like myself, um, he's interesting. So um, we like him, we like his honesty, um, we just don't want a situation where um, the actual fun out there people um, are afraid to speak. I dare say Joe Worrell is 23. Um, I've spoken to uh, many footballers in my time and some of them, bless them as much as I admire them and love them and respect them as players, you can't get anything out of them at all. They're just closed off. And I get it. Look, I totally get it. But um, we don't want to get to the point where the actual interesting football players, not saying the other ones aren't interesting, but the ones who are going to present as interesting, uh, we don't get to hear from. So um, be interested in your comments on that. Should we go easier on footballers and not jump all over them when the fun ones who are prepared to do reads for kids and make quizzes and actually be a little bit honest in interviews um, kind of get uh, dragged through the mud by the, the clickbait. Um, the second thing is, has he actually got a point here um, in respects of, look, we don't know what's going to happen with the virus. Nobody wants the season to be cancelled. That would really, really suck. It would, um, and again, we have to preface every bit of content about football by saying, yes, we know there are more important things in the world, but we need some things to discuss and people want content at this time. So yeah, we all get it, those of us talking about football. And yes, um, it would be dreadful for, um, you know, many, many reasons that we've discussed on many, many videos that a null and void is really a very bad scenario, yes, with the caveat that, um, you know, there are more important things to talk about. But in a footballing sense, the null and void is the kind of worst of all the evils. And could you actually get a situation where um, we know we think we're going to get legal challenges from clubs? Is that any worse than a player striking the club suing the organisations? But I don't know. Um, it, essentially, it's the same thing. Is that, I don't suppose, a refusal to um, go on the go on the pitch and play is different than a refusal to an accept, accept a decision and, and go legal on it. But they come from the same kind of position of this is not fair, we need to do this another way. Could you um, get a scenario where this does actually happen? Who knows? Um, be interested in your comments on that. I suspect we'll... Um, Generally, where footballers are concerned, people um, can't see past the money they make. Um, and um, I sense that the reaction is, oh, how dare they go on strike? They should be lucky just to play. But um, there is the other side to it of 
sporting integrity, is it fair, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Get your comments in on that. Um, third thing is the responsibility of the BBC. Obviously, there's been a lot of heat on the BBC um, recently. I mean, it feels for a lot of years that it's a fairly antiquated concept that you have to pay a license fee um, to the BBC, regardless of whether you consume any of their content or not, especially now when you can pay five quid for Netflix, etc. I've heard every argument for, every argument against. Maybe we'll do a, a separate video on that. But we know the BBC's remit, because I learned this at school, is to inform, educate and entertain. And should they be beyond this clickbaity um, type headline, especially when a player is giving up their free time to talk to the BBC and they kind of throw him under the bus in this way. Is this behaviour becoming of the BBC? I don't know. Am I on my moral high horse about it? Who knows? It feels like it doesn't match any of that remit of inform, educate and entertain. Um, I know everyone's in a battle for content and clicks, etc. But does the BBC have a responsibility to behave even better? And yes, I know before anyone comments that when the BBC asks me to do something, I go and do it because I want to try and push my channel, etc. So I'll sit on the fence on this one and invite comment on it. So um, interesting little um, little sort of side story um, maybe to talk about. Be interested in the comments. One on uh, has Joe Worrell been stitched up? Um, was he speaking tongue in cheek? Does he have a point? Um, should footballers be honest on Twitter or um, are we just going to have a load of automatons who say nothing? And does the BBC have a responsibility, especially given it was on their platform and they've kind of um, not uh, taken out of context to say, not, not misquoted, they've quoted him directly, but taken out of context, do they have a responsibility to behave in a slightly um, less disingenuous way than that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I'll keep my powder dry. Um, I think Joe Worrell's a good player and um, I think we need um, people who are fun and engaging when they talk. So um, that would be my stance on, on him and I'll invite your comments on the other. Um, let me know about any other content you want to see as um, things change sort of day by day. We're trying to keep up, but it is a slow process without any football at the moment. Check out on the channel, great piece with uh, my friend David Diamond, football historian on Norman Hunter and his passing and his career. Um, I collaborate with Jack Reeve from Talk Norwich City. I'm going to do a few of those um, about East Anglian derbies. Loads of top tens and things of that nature. So do come along and click. Obviously, again, there are more important things in the world, but those of us trying to build up uh, YouTube channels are struggling a little bit at the moment. So um, we'd be grateful if you comment and click and thumbs up, etc. Follow me on Twitter at Benjamin Bloom and get in the comments on this video about Joe Worrell and has he been thrown under the bus by the BBC. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video. Over and out.